November the 2nd, Obama is elected in the U.S. Senate. November the 4th, Obama defeated John McCain in the presidential election. January the 20th, 2009, was the largest inauguration in the presidential history. Obama inaugurated as the 44th president of the United States and served our country for two consecutive terms. His task was not easy, but God we serve surrounded him with his love and kindness and brought him through. We know with Christ all things are possible. Continue to dream and let God give you the student to integrate an elementary school in the South. I was six years old, and since it was 1960, at that time, I helped advance the civil rights movement. I was the oldest of five children and was born on September 8, 1954. My parents were Lucille and Abby Bridges, whose occupation was that of farmers in Tyler Town, Mississippi. At the age of two, my siblings and I were moved by our parents to New Orleans, Louisiana, so that our parents, Lucille and Avon, could find better work opportunities. At the same time of my birth in 1954, there came about a landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling. This ruling, ironically, was the Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, which was a ruling that ended racial segregation in public schools. Still, even after that landmark ruling, Southern states resisted integration. And in 1959, I attended a segregated New Orleans kindergarten. One year later, the federal court ordered Louisiana to desegregate. So, the same school district decided to create entrance exams to see if the African-American students could compete academically at an all-white school. Five other students and I passed the exam. Yet my father did not want me to attend the school because he feared for my safety. But my mother wanted me to have the best educational opportunity I could have. Also, the school that I would attend was the all-white William France Elementary School, which was just a few blocks from where my family and I lived. To add to that, the school dragged its feet until November 14th. So two of the five students decided to stay at their old school, and the other three were sent to the all-white McDonald Elementary School. So for one whole year, my mother and I, escorted by four federal marshals, went to that all-white school. And looking back over the years, I remember walking past crowds of people who screamed vicious slurs at me. I was not frightened initially, but I was frightened after seeing a woman holding a black baby doll in a coffin during that period. Once fully in school, though, I spent my very first day in the principal's office because of the chaos caused by white parents pulling their own children from school. Some even withdrew their children from the school permanently. <laughs> Consequently, there was only one teacher who was willing to work or rather teach me. Her name was Barbara Henry, a Boston native. She taught me a class of one. She would not only teach me, she would also eat lunch with me and play with me. I never missed one day of school that whole year. Meanwhile, there were those who supported my family, the Bridges family, and the decision for me to attend the school. They gave us encouragement. They sent money even to help us out. But in the end, our whole family suffered for our courage. Abin, my father, lost his job and grocery stores refused to sell to my mother who was sealed. Her sharecropping grandparents were evicted from the farm where they had lived 
for a quarter century. Eventually, and over time, other African American students enrolled in this same school. Many years later, I, Ruby, had four nieces who attended the same school, the William France Elementary School. In addition, in 1964, artist Norman Rockwell created a painting to celebrate my courage. This painting was titled, The Problem We All Live With. Finally, I graduated. I became a travel agent. I married and had four sons. In the mid-1990s, I was reunited with my teacher, Barbara Henry, for a while, and we both enjoyed giving speaking engagements together. A time later, I wrote about my school experiences at the All White School in two books. I received the Carter G. Woodson Book Award for both of these books. In 1999, I established the Ruby Bridges Foundation since I have always been a lifelong activist for racial equality. My foundation was to promote tolerance and create change through education. Last but not least, I was made an honorary deputy marshal in a ceremony in Washington, D.C. in 2000. Thank you.